going. Hi, I'm Scott, KC8KBK. And uh, my friend Greg, NHGRY, and, uh, and I are here in Dayton, uh, Dayton, Ohio, for the Dayton Hamvention 2013. And these are some great boat anchors that we just picked up in the flea market today. Yeah, on the left? On the left is a BC-224 U.S. Army Signal Corps receiver from an aircraft from World War II era. And I have a Halicrafters Model SX-99 HF receiver. We think it dates from about the 1960s. Tonight in our hotel room, the wonderful Super 8 Motel in Moraine, Ohio. Look, check out that smoke detector. Yeah. Sweet. We're going to try and put them on the air. Okay, so the BC-224 uh, came with this uh, speaker and power supply assembly, which I've taken apart here. It's got a, a rectifier tube in there and uh, speaker muting and so on and so forth. I'm going to check this electrolytic and uh, bypass it. And it, the neat thing about it is it came with this extra, um, actually came with the uh, proper connection to the BC-224. So, we're going to fix this up and then see how it works. Okay, so I removed, we removed this power supply from the, uh, the enclosure here. The speaker actually has a little, um, it actually has an inductor. The inductor is the magnet, so the speaker is part of the power supply here. So this leads me to believe it was probably done shortly after the war. Um, before they had permanent magnet speakers that were, so the magnets were strong enough uh, to be used as such. And here's the chassis. I removed that rectifier tube. That's where the speaker goes. And here it is underneath. And the interesting thing to note is this is just a piece of sheet metal that someone just bent over and turned into this chassis. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at this this uh, electrolytic here and uh, see what to do about it. Okay, so we backwards engineered the power supply. And uh, this is what it looks like. And we're going to replace these eight microfarad caps with a couple of pens and uh, give it a try. All right, so uh, that capacitor is bypassed right here and here with the 10 microfarad caps. The next question is, will this power supply run? So we'll check that with the uh, voltmeter. Okay, so according to the notes that the guy who uh, is deceased left us, 450 volts unloaded power supply, 210 loaded. So. We have a voltmeter. We have a volunteer who's going to plug this thing in. You I'm ready? Dangerously. You do it dangerously. Okay. Shall we? 450 unloaded. Now just don't shock your head when you're down there. <laughs> All right. Go for it. It's in? All right. All right. Let's watch the meter climb. Well, that didn't take long. It's already at 466. <laughs> Is the tube up? Yeah, the filaments are lit. Okay, so that's about right. So I think the um, next thing we'll do is this guy hacked this thing so that um, this we found this fuse in here, FU23. Turns out it goes to the dynamotor, take, which takes 14 volts. So I think what happened was the guy hacked it and he actually took this connection over here ran it right to the other end of the fuse and removed the fuse because the fuse is missing. So we're pretty confident that's the that's what happened. So we're going to do a continuity test between pins 3 and 4 and ground just to check to see if anything's shorted out and uh, we'll do another. We'll power up the radio itself. Okay, so we replaced the caps in the power supply and now we're going to plug it in and see if it works. Um, you think that's safe? There's a lot of exposed wiring. Yeah, that's no problem. And I've seen worse. 80 years old, but my life insurance is paid up, so cat will be all right. Hey, just don't hit your head on that high voltage supply when you plug that in. You'd probably kill yourself with that. <laughs> See what happens. All right. Oh, boy, here it goes. Oh, look at that. The dial lights came on. Filaments are glowing. Smell any like smoke? Voltage, yep. Whoa, what's that? I hear some stuff in the speaker. What is that? That is a shortwave station. We're in between 9.9 .9 and 10 megacycles. Hey, here we go. With this crappy two foot piece of wire hooked to it. So now we're going to tune to WWV from Fort Collins, Colorado at 10 megahertz With AM and see how it comes out. There we go.
the alignment? I'd say it works. And say we got a runner. Yeah, the alignment can use a little work. <laughs> it's okay. That's the least of the problems. <laughs> All right. Cool. Twenty-four minutes. There it is. My watch is right on the money. Now hold You're this. off by about two one hundredths of a megacycle. Oh yeah, we could fix Not that. A Not a big deal. It's coming in pretty strong with that uh, two and a half, three feet of wire there. I think if you hold it up, there you go. Very cool. All right, here it is. We put the radio back together, and uh, it's playing pretty well. It has a couple of minor deficiencies, one of which is the uh, the crystal. <laughs> it's a little quiet on the crystal filter. I understand these usually are, uh, and one band is kind of dead. Needs a little work, but we'll take a look at that. Otherwise, uh, we've successfully tuned in sideband uh, all right tonight on. Uh, and 20 meters, so in addition to CW and whatnot, pretty nice rig.